Howdy, I'm Pootie, back at it again with another episode of Salmon Recon. For lack of better description, we're playing some freelance Salmon Run in Splatoon 3 and then talking about it. Yay! Thank you guys so much for your feedback on the first episode. It looks like this series has been received pretty well, and I'm happy to work on more of these videos because really, I just- I love having any excuse I can get to play Salmon Run. I did want to get another episode out sooner, but life got busy around the holidays. And as luck would have it, I got COVID! And thanks to COVID, I also got bronchitis! So all I can say is, Happy New Year, Mr. Grizz! I've already used up all my sick days! The Winter Splatfest is here, and as fun as it all is, I'm kinda tired of Turf War, and I wish there were ranked game modes in rotation during these events. But I've lost enough matches for Team Spicy as is, so let's take a break before halftime and clock in to see what other weirdos are playing Salmon Run during a Splatfest. I'm gonna start things off with a test fire of the weapons that we've been given for this rotation. If you want to skip straight to the action, here's a timestamp, yada yada. And of course, we get really good weapons and a really good map during this Blatfest, but you know how it is. First up is the Arrow Spray, which is very, very welcome in Salmon Run. Inking around your basket, inking walls and escape routes is so important, because the last thing you want is your team getting caught out in enemy ink. The Arrow Spray has a really high fire rate, so it's super good against stingers and fish sticks. And honestly, your DPS is pretty good too. Just keep in mind that your damage and your range isn't as much as you probably think it is. Up next is the default Splat Roller, which is probably my favorite roller to use in Salmon Run. You get pretty good damage and range with both the horizontal and vertical swipes, but I'd say the strongest thing about this weapon is its crushing power and its mobility in enemy ink. You can simply run over small fry and chums, which makes it great for crowd control as well as a lot of the night waves. You might have a bit of trouble taking down boss salmonids and cohawks on your own, but as long as you stick with your allies and add your damage to theirs, you can play an amazing support role. So really, just try to take care of lesser salmonids, and with a few horizontal swings, you can deal with cohawks pretty well too. And one of the main reasons I decided to record this session is because the H3 nozzle nose is back in rotation, for those who are just tuning in, the H3 nozzle nose is kind of tricky to use in Salmon Run. Players tend to struggle against crowds with this weapon because it mostly focuses on single target burst fire damage. But on the other hand, it has good range and really good damage against bosses. Focus on taking out bosses and try to keep to high ground so you don't get overwhelmed by lesser salmonid crowds. You may also want to play with this weapon a bit in the training room to get used to the timing of it. If you can get a good rhythm going, then you'll optimize your damage. And last but not least is the 96 Gal. As you might notice, the rate of fire is kind of slow, but the damage is wonderful. It's really good against crowds of lesser salmonids, and it's honestly really good against bosses too. I found in Turf War that it's kind of hard to hit players with this weapon, because not only is the aiming kind of inconsistent, but players are really fast. Meanwhile, in Salmon Run, most of the enemies are really big and really slow, so rest assured your damage is going to be really viable in this mode. With our weapons covered, let's hop into the heli and get down to Sockeye Station. Um, as a side note, I typically do a bunch of warm-up sessions before I start recording for this series, just so I can get the really stupid plays out of the way. I mean, I'm still gonna make bad calls. Like, it's a learning experience, whatever. But I decided to hit the record button because I was playing with this group of freelancers for a while, and they were pretty fun to play with. And before I knew it, we basically had our King Salmonid meters charged, so I thought, hey, let's let's see if we can get some Kohozuna footage in. Uh, what we're trying to do here, or at least three of us, is lure while one of us <laughs> runs and tries to be a hero, but we get out of there pretty unscathed. It's not a really good idea to rush the shoreline in low tide on any map, but especially on this map because you've got these really narrow land bridges that you can get caught in. Um, I decided to try and use some bombs from a range to deal with the scrappers and stingray, just so I wouldn't get, you know, you can see I'm taking a lot of damage here, just trying to get around. But once I finally have an opening, I decided to go ham. I <laughs> use my mobility and the swings of my brush to the best of their ability. Um, yet again, we have some more stationary bosses that are cropping up on the shores, and some of our higher fire rate 
teammates are going over there to deal with them, which is good. And um, I make a pretty bad misplay here. I don't know why I thought... Like, I, I, guess, I guess I understand what I was thinking, which was that, oh, the fish stick is at a really bad spot. Uh, I should get rid of it. But <laughs> vertical swings with the splat roller is not the way to go about it. It would have been better to just climb the stick. And I also had fly fish misses on me, so I'm not really sure what that was about. Um, like I said, <laughs> like I said, I did have some warm-up rounds, but I'm still prone to making bad calls. Um, but it doesn't matter because we cleared the wave, and isn't that all that matters? To Mr. Grizz, at least. <laughs> Next round, we've got the Nozzle Nose, which, if some of y'all recall from the first episode, I was lamenting that the game wasn't handing me this weapon much, so... Fortunately, now I get to show it off a bit. Um, again, we're dealing with some low tide. I want to lure, but <laughs> our, I guess our friends just really want to get in there. And like just getting getting up close like this just um, compromises you, and it's not a great idea. And I guess all of us decided at the same time, fuck that one fly fish in particular, and we all blew our specials. So, unfortunately, that's kind of a waste. I wish I could have redirected it to the big shot over in the left corner there, but I guess we'll just have to make do. I decide, like, to just kind of deal with some of these guys, especially the eel. Anytime an eel is chasing someone, I feel like it, I should do whatever's in my power to deal with it. And with that big shot taken care of, I decide, okay, cool. That's, <laughs> that's one threat to our basket down. I'll just try to take out some of the enemies that are closer to our basket for some easy egg depositing. Um, so as, as, I, as we have teammates dying and the other bosses are closing in, it probably would have been better to just abandon this stick and deal with them because good, good gracious, that's three fucking steelheads threatening our basket over here. Um, but if I could have timed this better, maybe I could have killed them all at once, but, I mean, I'm still dealing with them. I really like using the Nozzle Nose to deal with Steelheads, because the Steelhead kind of has a small time frame, small window for you to destroy the bomb that it's on his head, and the nice thing about Nozzle Nose is that it's a very quick burst of damage. So, even if you're kind of caught unprepared by a steelhead, you can dish out the damage pretty quickly. And for our final wave, we are on high tide with the 96 Gal, which is really just a chunky shooter and all-rounder. Um, I'll, I'll never complain if it's handed to me. It's, it's very strong and capable. Uh, the last of my specials being used on these stupid slamming lids because I, I know that with the way that they're funneling enemies, it's just going to be a pain for any of our players to get to it. Um, hopefully that was an okay call and we can deal with the rest of the enemies. Um, I don't really know how many specials my allies have left, but we'll make, we'll make do. I think it was the right call to get rid of the lid and stop spawning all those enemies. We just dealt with a fly fish and another is in its place. That's, <laughs> that's just Executive V High Tide. Executive V. Executive VP high tide for you. Um, anyway, like, yeah, any of the any of the weapons that have decent fire rate are good for dealing with these bosses. And I guess we do we do have some specials up our sleeve. So now I'm just gonna focus on keeping allies alive. And just taking out whatever's closest to the basket for some easy eggs. I'm not really sure why I, I'm not sure why I snuck past there. That was a little risky, but I mean it worked. Some <laughs> a lot of these warm-up rounds. This still feels like a warm-up round, but I decided to record it anyway. A lot of these warm-up rounds are like, um, hey, I'm playing a little risky, but it works. <laughs> and my suspicions were correct. We do have a boss salmonid coming up. It's a good thing I hit record because fighting the Kohozuna on high tide is equal parts scary and fun. I honestly prefer it to fighting him on medium tide because it's really frustrating chasing him around the little spiral mountain that's located in the center of the map. It's really frustrating when you have an ally luring the 
King Salmon it away from all of the bosses and eggs, so it's really hard to do damage to him in time. But at least here, he's always nearby, so you can wail on him. I hopped in there to try and do some slam and lid damage to him, and now we're kind of just kind of try and kite him around, <laughs> keep him from hopefully trapping our friends over there with eggs. Um, I maybe should have kept attacking him, but I decided to get up here, deal with more of the bosses that were flowing in, and use this steel head to destroy the scrapper. You really want to try to get rid of bosses as quickly and efficiently as you can just to keep a steady flow of eggs in and also keep the map from getting overrun. I'm not really sure what I was doing at this part. I almost run into the Pozuna and get flattened. But if we kind of back out here, I decide that yeah, no one is near that uh, that stinger and I don't want him to destroy my allies. But as you can see, we have 30 seconds on the clock and his health is almost gone. Our team really pulled through. And <laughs> watch the roller here. Look how look how far the roller got pushed. He just got like shot pulled and then destroyed sadly. But I mean, hey, the Kozuna is down. I'm just <laughs> It's like it's like the roller tried to block a body slam from the Kohozuna, but just the sheer force and girth of that fellow just sent him sliding across the floor. It could have just been lag, but it was pretty funny to watch. I mean, yeah, we uh we did pretty good against him. Um, and we kept the map under control in high tide, so kudos to my freelance friends. What's nice is that they decide to stick around and continue playing, because, I mean, I don't know, what, el what else is there to do? Participate in Splatfest? Uh... <laughs> I think the part of this Splatfest I'm going to remember the most is... Not the teams or the memes or anything like that. It's gonna be the time where I queued up for a bunch of pro battles after maps had updated, and I kid you not, the game sent me to Hammerhead Bridge like 10 times in a row. No, like, like it's, it had to have been even more than that. It was crazy, just... I don't even remember what other map was in rotation. I was going out of my mind. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway, back to Salmon Run. We've got the arrow spray. And I'm taking care to ink walls, even like the little inlet around our basket, just to provide some ease of access to our allies. Like, uh, just watch the splipper flopper here. <laughs> Such an easy target. I think he was disabled in like less than a second. But just um, wonderful inking and pretty good ink tank capacity too. Which is great to have when we have this many drizzlers, so we can, like, paint right over their mess. Uh, it also looks like we've got some allies over in the right shore of the map, as they're using a Big Shots egg cannon to send some eggs our way. And with, with no one planning to take care of these stingers, I I decided to fill in that duty. I mean, I'm, I'm probably one of the best weapons suited to it. I also decide to disable the um, flyfish a bit, just so that paired with these ink storms, the flyfish missiles don't trip us up, up too badly. I probably should have taken more care to get rid of those ink missiles, but... Oh dear, Pootie, what kind of throw was that? <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> Come on, Pootie! Or some fucking goals. <laughs> Come on, you little poop nugget. Get your head in the game. We seem to be having a lot of low tide waves today, which is actually a pretty good learning opportunity because I am a firm believer that low tide is the most dangerous of the three tides on the Sockeye Station map itself. Uh, not for not for the reason that I died here. That was just a really obvious trap that I walked right into. <laughs> Dear God, I'm just now remembering what a disaster this entire wave was. Where do I start? Um, I don't know if I was very clear on this earlier, but I used the word luring, and 
Luring is a term coined by Salmon Run players that essentially means remaining near your basket and allowing Salmonid bosses to move closer to you. Um, this is really effective because it unclutters bosses and then when you KO them, they drop eggs closer to your basket, which makes it a lot easier to deposit them. As you can see, there's a bunch of eggs scattered on the shoreline and there's a bunch of bosses that are preventing us from getting closer to the eggs. Next up, uh, this really unfortunate Booyah Bomb. So I greatly overestimated the range of my Booyah Bomb when I was trying to take out those two stingers and that fly fish. And it just went bloop into the ocean and fizzled out. And that was sad. And from that point onward, it was just pandemonium. Uh, I was panicking. The timer was going down. Our egg quota was hardly met. And my allies were just dropping around my feet. Uh, had, I, had I been more level-headed, maybe the best response would have been after failing that first Booyah Bomb, for me to get a little closer in range, fire off my second Booyah Bomb special, and take out those Stingrays, because really there was no reason to leave those Stingrays alive. Th that was what was tripping us up the most. And maybe, theoretically, we could have met our quota by clearing out the bosses around our basket, but it's it was too little too late. Really, your specials are meant to be used to prevent things from going sour rather than waiting till the end. I know it's not very satisfying to watch runs end like this, but I remember someone telling me that on my last video they liked how I kept my mistakes in, and I do think that my mistakes belong in these kind of videos. At the end of the day, it's just as important to know how to win your runs as it is to know why you lost your runs. I'll always stand by that. I think we're all playing a little safer this round, especially with how the last low tide wave went. Um, we're kind of hanging back, and we even have a teammate pop in their special on wave one to knock out that fly fish, which, honestly, fair. It's allowing us to get to the eggs a lot easier and relay them back to our basket. Um, if for any reason you need to go to the shore on low tide, on this map, I'd recommend taking the leftmost or the rightmost paths. They are absolutely the safest. As you can see, there's a ramp for the player and then a ledge, which means that any lesser salmonids and floor-bound salmonids cannot climb up there and swarm you. So it's, it's pretty safe for ranged players, and it's allowing me to take out these stationary salmonid bosses and then move. I don't want to stay there too long because the longer I do that, the more bosses will spawn and they will target me since I'm closest to them. That's not only dangerous for me, but it's inconvenient for my allies who are hanging out by the basket. I've also kind of uh, used the basket to shield myself from the steelhead bomb, which is pretty cool. I bet you can do that with the fish sticks as well. Haven't practiced it, but I mean, I imagine I imagine that's how it works. I'll have to I'll have to try that a little bit more. But yeah, we've met our quota, and even though I'm I'm kind of stupid and I run out of ink, I decide to stick around and just take out the annoying uh, stingers to the best to the best that I can. But I mean, you know, it's it's so close to the end of the wave. I was like, I might as well do this. We have enough eggs. And I appreciate the little bomb throw to rev me. That was sweet. <laughs> Let me just take a sip of my coffee. Good shit. <laughs> so, good for us, it's a night wave, and we've got the splat roller. And rollers tend to be really, really good during night waves for crowd control. So even though we have some pretty powerful horizontal swings, and I am going to use that to try to take these grillers out, my main priority for this wave is going to be crowd control. I'm going to be focusing on the swarms of little small fry shitheads, so that my team doesn't get their ankles bitten off. And it's just, it's, it's so easy. You just, you pop it down and you crush them. You could even stand in place if you run out of ink just to kind of bounce them off of you. I do have to make a escape exit here, but... And as you can see, we have some friends that are getting both grilled and covered in these annoying little guys. So I decided to pop some specials to do some extra damage. Um, if you If you're doing a griller wave and or even the Mudmouth wave, and there's a bunch of 
little small fries that are threatening your teammates. If you've got the if you've got any of the rollers or if you have a high fire rate weapon, you may want to prioritize taking care of them. Like I see my friend Wu here getting uh, barraged by the little guys and I run up to kind of protect them a bit. And I pop another special again just to do some damage, but it's not enough to stun any of them, so I've got to stay on the move. You can see both of those red lasers are on me, which means they're both aggroing me, which means I've got to keep moving. I've got to keep jumping on and off of the platforms to redirect their pathing so that I don't get run over. Because as soon as I get run over, then they're going to start targeting my other teammates, and my other teammates are going to get swarmed by the little guys. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely was prioritizing surviving near the end, but fortunately the redirecting was enough to keep the gorillas off my teammate and teammates and allow them to deposit some golden eggs. Anyway, we're at the last wave, and I am down all my specials, but I, I tried to persevere. <laughs> Dear god, I wanted to take out these stingers, but the stingers killed two of my teammates, so I back up, I revive them, because <laughs> if I'd if I'd just gone and fought them, there's a good chance they would both target my last remaining teammate, or they'd start to target me. And that would that would very much compromise our team. We'd be we'd probably have like one or zero teammates remaining had that happened. So yeah, like even if you if you've got two teammates down, you may just want to back up from whatever you're working on and see about reviving them. Because if you're if you're fighting, you don't want to be the center of attention of the entire map. It's it's good to kind of just dial back and see how the map is doing and the status of your teammates every once in a while. We do have some teammates with their specials remaining, so that's that's a godsend. And oh, that was so close. <laughs> I'm glad that my friends are doing something about these bosses, because that eel should have got me in. Oh, the reef slider, let's go. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a rush here, but I know we can get the egg. And just great, great work on everyone's part. I don't know how I fucking survived that round, but I'll take it. We take those. <laughs> you got another reef slider? What you doing, Boomy? <laughs> so quick question, when Mr. Grizz says that you will become one with the sea itself, what do you think he means? Like does he does he mean that you're gonna stink? Does he mean that you're just gonna walk into the ocean one day and get absorbed by the radiation? Uh just just think about it. Don't don't comment and tell me. This is a rhetorical question. I just want you to think about it because, god, I'm so tired. So if you guys haven't noticed, we're in like 23 minutes into the video and I'm running out of bits. <laughs> we're just at that point. What can I talk about? Uh, what weapon do I have? Nozzle nose. Uh, yeah, I only just recently realized that the nozzle nose looks kind of like a power washer. Like, wow, would you know it, the weapons in Splatoon are based off of things. <laughs> but no, like, I only realized it because I've been playing quite a bit of Power Wash Simulator recently. Um, not because I've been, like, observing anything in the real world or touching grass or anything like that. It was it was from a video game. Yeah. Okay, now I'm out of bits. So we're on a Mud Mouth Wave, which is a little bit dangerous for this weapon. I don't get to showcase it all that much. But um, while H3 Nozzle Nose is pretty good against Kohawks, it might be kind of dangerous against crowds. So we're just going to take advantage of all of the elevated ledges that we can stand on to keep us away from the lesser salmonids. And fortunately, um, Sockeye Station, is that what it's not called? Sockeye Circuit. <laughs> now it just sounds like a Mario Kart stage. At Salkai Station is probably like one of the best maps for mud mounts. It's pretty fun, and there's just so many areas that you can toss your bombs from. You can even toss your bomb from the basket 
to any mud mouths that spawn on top of Spiral Mountain up here. If you just get some uh, running, swimming speed, you can jump and you can throw them a nice safe distance away instead of climbing right up to him. And uh, now we've got a bunch of little uh, small fries. And unfortunately, our, our teammate who has the roller is not using it to protect themselves or us. They just, they die. So I throw a little bomb, a little splat bomb there to do some better blast radius damage and get rid of them. I also do some power washing detailing on our map here before the next wave starts. So we've got a normal tide wave. Though I think I remember this wave being kind of silly. Let's see if memory serves right. I'm kind of just, uh, while no bosses are spawning nearby, I'm inking walls and escape routes. I decide to attack some lesser salmonids. And then when the bosses start approaching, I hang out by the basket to try and lure them. Also, uh, keep an eye on the steelhead. You'll see the steelhead is aggroing the fish stick player, and I don't know if they're ever gonna patch this or if they're gonna leave it be, but if a if a steelhead is targeting you while you're on a fish stick, they will never manage to fire a bomb at you. They'll just keep approaching you and staring at you menacingly. <laughs> so I went ahead and um, aggroed the steelhead so we could KO it and get um, get some eggs, because it didn't really seem like our, our teammate Squid Nasty was going to do anything about that. They kind of were just staying up there like, when when the steelhead opens its bomb, I will attack. But yeah, we, uh, we make a dash over here just to get rid of the big shot preemptively. And we already have our quota hit. Um, our teammate threw a bomb, which didn't make it into the fly fish, but I appreciate it. I appreciate the thought. We've also got a great uh, vantage point to knock out these annoying fish sticks. It feels like we're just, even though we got some fly fishes on us and the um, big shot has reappeared, it feels like we're kind of just mad chilling, just staying on the move. And I mean, yeah, like, <laughs> we're well over quota, so I punish the fly fish and just go on my merry way, uh, inking and all that. And for the final wave, we've got Splat Roller, and it's a night wave, which normally I'd be pretty ecstatic about, having crowd control and mobility, but it's actually more of a normal wave with some glitter sprinkled on top of it. This is a fog wave. Um, I can't stress this enough, but it's really important to communicate on waves like these. It's whether you're in freelance or you're playing with a pre-made. Um, because of the lack of visibility, it's it can be hard for you to tell like where the action is happening. We have some teammates kind of like generally pinging where the action is going on, and as as you can see over here, I, I see like nothing. I had like one umbrella enemy, and I'm just like moving eggs to the basket. But it's a completely other story on the um, on the right shoreline of the map. Also, it's wave three. There is no excuse to not use your specials. Sometimes just um, popping your special during wave three will remind your allies that they have specials. So our Booyah Bomb player has uh, been knocking out a bunch of annoying enemies like Stingers. Even though we can't see it very well, um, I see them and I appreciate them. Are we really doing this again? Come on, booty. <laughs> <laughs> this again? I don't even have an excuse this time. Last time I had, like, less time to react to the mobs. This time I had plenty of time, but I kind of just stayed there and let myself get bored. I also probably could have just waited until the steelhead had its bomb open to use my, um, my special. And there's- there really probably could have waited until the goldie was a bit closer to the basket, too, but... I mean, we're- we're still- we weren't really in any threat of losing that wave, so it doesn't really matter, does it? And my, my friends are just, like, blasting me at point blank with ink while I spin around. What a, what a time to be alive! <laughs> so, like, when Mr. Grizz says that you'll become one with the sea- I'm not doing this again. <laughs> Man. Grizz, Mr. Grizz thinks I have got a future here. I- I hope so! 
<laughs> I should hope so. I've got both the black and the white slop suit unlocked. I, I hope I've got a future here. Executive 100 BP. <laughs> mince, mince meat metalworks. Yeah, I sure hope it does. Okay, so like this is a carbon copy of another wave we recently had. It's a night wave with grillers. I have the splat roller again. I squart the small fries. Like nothing, nothing exceptional happens here, except I do play it a bit more efficiently and I don't have to use all of my specials. So like, that's nice, but I mean, what, what else can I chat about? Like, what's, what's happened to me recently? Oh yeah, okay, so, um, weeks back I visited my mother's boyfriend's family for Christmas, and they were lovely people, it was a great time, and mom's boyfriend was setting up a ton of packages around the Christmas tree that were, like, kind of thin and weirdly wrapped, and he was like, I got drones for everybody, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, sure you did. And he's, you know, he jokes about it and everyone's kind of like anxious and we all unwrap them and no, of course they're not drones, but they're instead like drain ferrets or drain weasels. It's, it's essentially like a long bendy stick with bristles on it that you shove down your drain and rotate and twist and then it, 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 uh, it catches hair and you can pull hair out of your drain to unclog it. And it's a thoughtful gift. It's useful. Um, with all of the holiday craziness and the COVID and bronchitis I got, I kind of put off using it, but I finally got around to using it today. Uh, the, the sinks were fine, but the shower, Jesus shitting Christ, it was so nasty. I'm, I'm baffled. I pulled out, like, cousin it levels of hair. Like, normally I have a, I have a drain fluid solution that I put down the shower drain, and it's supposed to dissolve and get rid of the hair. But, I mean, clearly it wasn't doing its job with how much I managed to pull out. And I'm sure there's even more down there, but good, good god, it was, it was disgusting. Um, I, I mean, this, this may be, this might not be the most pleasant thing to talk about, but I guess, like, everyone's level of what's disgusting or not is subjective. I mean, probably, it's, pr it's probably really tame to just talk about, but if you'd been here and you saw it, you'd probably be retching. It was, it was so bad. Salmon run? Is that what this video is about? I, <laughs> how the hell do I even steer this back? <laughs> so we have the H3 nozzle nose, which, like I said before, has really high DPS and decent range. So it's very good against the tankier bosses of Salmon Run, like the Big Shot and the Drizzler. We hang back a bit to deliver eggs, and wow, what a nice throw. <laughs> that egg cannon egg landed directly on our head. I, um, I stick with one friend near the basket, and then our other two friends decide to fight bosses near the, um, egg cannon and send them to us. As long as you have allies near the bat near the base, and they're both- al and, like, all of them are alive, you can afford to stay on the shore and egg cannon eggs to the base. Unfortunately, I missed the ink storm missile, and that's gonna wind up being my demise because <laughs> this chum Mufasa slapped me off of the hill. Long live the king, bitch. But uh, fortunately, one of our allies put down a really well-placed squid beacon right around our basket. Uh, good timing too, because the basket's are getting a bit overwhelmed by bosses right now. I'm, I'm very, very pleasantly surprised by how well the wave breaker works in Salmon Run. I have to wonder if it was kind of designed for both PvP modes and Salmon Run, because, like, it's, it, it, you know, it clearly has its use in PvP, but in Salmon Run, it's not only doing constant damage to lesser Salmonids and stunning enemies like the Scrapper, but that healing and revive pulse is so useful. Nothing exciting happens this wave either. I'm gonna share another story. So, like, so last night, I had a really weird dream. Um, in, in this dream, I was streaming a Super Mario Sunshine fan mod on this really sketchy and obscure streaming service website. And the only person who bothered to show up to my poorly advertised live stream was one of my friends, Joey. 
and Joey was muted. And not once did he ever type anything in the chat. So it was just silent Joey watching me stream this weird fucking Mario game. And the main draw of this fan mod was that a angry Pianta woman is chasing Mario around and yelling at him and trying to toss Mario like the Chucksters do and try basically trying to kill him. And what you had to do in this mod... Okay, it was kind of cool how I managed to escape there. So your objective in this Mario game was run through the several levels and worlds in like a weird order while she's chasing you, and you had to like kind of lead her through the levels. I guess she's like leading her so she doesn't fall off of anything, but um, don't let her catch you because she'll kill you. And the end goal was to eventually spawn in Delfino Plaza and then lead her to Corona Mountain at which point you lead her into the lava and kill her, because apparently the lava in Corona Mountain is the only way to actually defeat her. Um, and that's- that's the mod. Um, <laughs> and the part of this dream that stuck out the most to me was when Mario spawned in a random town or village, and the townspeople, like, didn't pay him any mind. But when the angry Pianta woman ran up to him screaming and flailing her arms, one of the concerned Pianta fathers grabbed his son and ran away to safety. <laughs> like, can you imagine if Nintendo actually put a detail like that in one of their Mario games? Okay, I'm kind of regretting talking over that entire wave. It was actually a pretty close call with some pretty close plays, but I guess, like, whatever. Because honestly, whatever commentary I could have had for that wave, it probably didn't matter if I couldn't think of anything off the top of my head. Oh, you're so friendly and you're so correct, Boomy. Friendly randos. Yeah, I like starting out a wave with the arrow spray because it gives me a chance to ink a bunch of walls. And yeah, with a little 360 there, the flipper floppers are completely trivial. <laughs> let my let my teammates finish the rest. I'm like, I've I've inked the floor. My work's done here. Time to uh, completely body the big shot. Um, and yeah, quite honestly, the DPS of the arrow spray is good enough to um, get rid of the drizzler in one rotation. So that's pretty nice. And yeah, the flipper flopper would have been easy work. So I just leave him alone and focus on the two big shots as they're. A much higher priority target. Do you also notice that um, I'm quite running out of ink, so I keep backing up, and I decide to just leave. Like, I could have stuck around where all those eggs were and tried to deliver them via the egg cannon, but that was- that wouldn't have been safe. Like, maybe had it been a pre-made game instead of a game with randoms and freelance, maybe I would have announced to my group, hey, I'm hanging out by the big shot cannon. So like cover for me or stay by the basket, but you really do have to like fend for yourself when you're playing in freelance. Oh, that is very unfortunate special. <laughs> it's bad to be down uh, down to one player left. Never want that. But <laughs> at least we turned out okay. But um yeah, that's an advice that's been shared a lot by has me, which um, is a channel I'll link as it's been very inspiring to me and it's been very helpful to me. And I mean, and if you're watching this, you probably have heard of it already, but has me runs a Splatoon channel that primarily focuses on Salmon Run, but focuses on other Splatoon content as well. And that's one of his advices about um, playing in freelance with randoms. You should prioritize your own safety and like just play as if the game will end if you die because really if you're out on your own and you get KO'd there's a good chance that like you'll be paired with allies who are not gonna seek you out you have no one that you can tell in voice where you are you can just keep spamming help on your controller but there's no guarantee that your random allies are gonna prioritize you uh, this turned out to be a much better reef slider. Sorry for kind of talking over the roller footage. 
But um, yeah, having a roller on high tide has been nice. I'm able to move around a bit. And unlike that one time where we wiped about that fish stick, I climbed up there and, well, my ally did most of the work, but at least I wasn't swinging aimlessly from the ground. I also threw a bomb so I wouldn't have to run all the way back out there to deal with that uh, annoying stinger. Fighting stingers with the roller is so frustrating. It's like one slow swing of your brush will ta we'll take out one, maybe two pots at most. So I usually will just throw like a bomb so that I don't have to get near and hopefully the bomb does more splash damage. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely, um, I don't even know what to say about this part here. We're fighting in like close, uh, <laughs> close quarters with all the other bosses, but kind of, um, kind of handling them pretty well. I don't know how else to describe it. We were kind of fighting in between the attack patterns of the different bosses, and even though we were surrounded at all sides, it it felt like we could cover we could cover for each other very well, and it was it was cool. I remember like having a just having a lot of fun this entire play session, and and just you know fighting fighting alongside these friendly woomies and bemos. Um, another wave of nozzle nose to close things out. <laughs> oh god, look at that stinger. <laughs> he just pops up with his head peeping out. Oh, and here's- here's- you can see Jazz, um, with the struggle is real, having to fight a stinger with the brush. It's- it is, like, anti-fun. It is the opposite of fun. It's so sad. Um, yeah, repping my nozzle nose here with that, um, really safe range. Like, just look how- look how easy it is for me to take out bosses like that from a safe distance. I love, I really love having this weapon. And there were things I could prioritize, but I did a weird, uh, you can see I hesitated a bit about, with that, uh, bomb throw. I wanted to make sure I could actually land it. It's, it's, it's kind of weird to see with the reticle when you're, um, you, oftentimes when I try to throw a bomb into a fly fish, like, from a side view, my per my idea of perception is way off and it just doesn't work. Is that three eels? Oh my god. <laughs> How will the Woomies and Vimos get out of this one? Oh, that's right. Everyone else has specials. I'm- I'm, a uh, specialist. I'm bitchless. It's fine. Like, really, we're just- it just seems like <laughs> all our training together, um, paid off. Because just <laughs> everywhere I turn, it's bosses getting splatted and objectives getting met. And the floor around our basket being inked, so good job, team. And as dangerous as it is, we've got a low tide king salmonid coming up. <laughs> I love that instead of inking the remaining areas of the base, we decided to squid dance to hype each other up a bit. <laughs> Sometimes morale is the most OP thing in this game mode. Or just in Splatoon at all. Really, like, <laughs> the games that I won the most in the Splatfest were ones where we were all, like, booyahing each other. Yeah, it's unfortunate that our teammate immediately died. They are the roller player, so it's kind of to be expected, but, um, time is very important in a King Salmonid battle. And any- all the seconds that your teammates spend being KO'd, are seconds that they're inactive, that they're not dealing damage or taking care of the enemies around you. Like, it's kind of passable in normal waves, but in the King Salmonid wave, this boss has so much health. You really want to have, um, allies around. I also decide to ignore that fish stick because it's not really- it's- it, it could be some free eggs, but it's not anywhere near the action, and it's not in a, in a crucial area where it may trip, trip up my allies. So I decide to forego it. Also, kind of unnecessary special. I really only used it to get past the King Salmonid and revive my ally. It's like I said, keeping your allies alive as soon as their, uh, their life ring pops up is high on my priority list. I just want as many allies alive wailing on this boss and the bosses around me as possible. And fortunately, our teammates have some specials that they use more efficiently than I do. <laughs> Near the end, it just feels like a wash. Like, get out of here. <laughs> Cheeks clap. Anyway, this was a really fun rotation to play, and... 
quite honestly, it's the rotating set of four weapons that keeps bringing me back to this game mode specifically. There's something about being given a weapon and then being forced to use it that I honestly really appreciate. There are so many different weapon types in this game that a lot of people don't even touch because they're kind of daunted by it. Or they don't want to let their teammates down in PvP because the weapon that they're trying out they're really unfamiliar with and shaky. But you know, sometimes you have to break out of your own comfort zone to find your new main weapon. But anyway, we've reached the end of this play session, so thank you guys so much for tuning in. Be sure to drink plenty of water, be sure to enjoy Splatfest a safe distance from your screen in a decently lit room, and try out the H3 Nozzle Nose, it'll teach you to aim and actually hit targets. Okay, bye!